Hello and welcome. I'm John, priest at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Camillus, New York, and this is for all the saints, our weekly remembrance of the holy women and holy men honored by the Episcopal Church. This week, remember St. Bakita, born in Sudan, taken as a slave, who found freedom in Italy as a member of the Kenosian Sisters. Let us pray. O God of love, you delivered your servant, Josephine Margaret Bakita, from the bondage of slavery to the true freedom of your service. Grant to the wounded your healing grace in mind, body, and spirit, and to your church the zeal to combat exploitation and slavery in all its forms. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from Paul's letters to the Colossians. Now I'm happy to be suffering for you. I'm completing what is missing from Christ's suffering with my own body. I'm doing this for the sake of his body, which is the church. I became a servant of the church by God's commission, which was given to me for you, in order to complete God's word. I'm completing it with a secret plan that has been hidden for ages and generations, but which now has been revealed to his holy people. God wanted to make the glorious riches of this secret plan known among the Gentiles, which is Christ living in you, the hope of glory. This is what we preach as we warn and teach every person with all wisdom so that we might present each one mature in Christ. I work hard and struggle for this goal with his energy, which works in me powerfully. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him asking, Give me justice in this case against my adversary. For a while he refused, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God or respect people. But I will give this widow justice because she keeps bothering me. Otherwise, there will be no end to her coming here and embarrassing me. The Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Won't God provide justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will give them justice quickly. But when the human one comes, will he find faithfulness on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Bakita was born about 1869 in Darfur, which is part of the modern nation of Sudan. She grew up in a large and loving family. Her father was a leader in the community. In her autobiography, she described her childhood as a very happy and carefree life without knowing what suffering was. While still a young child, about eight years old, her community was attacked by Arab slave traders who captured her and forced her and other captives to march 600 miles to the city of El Obaid in eastern Sudan, where she was sold as a slave. Bakita was not actually her given name, but she claimed that the trauma of captivity was so dehumanizing that she actually forgot her name and so was given the Arabic name Bakita, which ironically means lucky or fortunate. She was initially bought by a rich trader, but sold after she accidentally broke a vase. Her second owner was a traditional whose family treated her cruelly. Bakita wrote of that time in her life, During all the years I stayed in that house, I do not recall a day that passed without some wound or other. When a wound from the whip began to heal, other blows would rain down upon me. Eventually, she was sold again and again and bought by the Italian vice consul Callisto Legnani. And when he returned to Italy in 1885, he brought Bakita with him. Three years later, Legnani bought a hotel on the Red Sea coast of Sudan and intended to take his family and Bakita, his slave, with him. However, when he and his wife uh, left to set up their business and household there in Sudan, their daughter and Bakita, who was her nurse, were left in the care of the Kenosian Sisters, a religious order, in Venice. It was there that Bakita learned of Christianity, from the sisters, of whom she wrote, Those holy mothers instructed me with heroic patience 
and introduced me to that God who from childhood I had felt in my heart without knowing who he was. When Legnani's wife returned to get her daughter and Bakita, Bakita refused to go, and the Kenoshan sisters supported her. They took the case to court to force the order to release Bakita, but the court ruled against the family, saying that since Britain, where, who ruled Sudan in those days, had outlawed slavery in Sudan before her birth, and since Italian law had never recognized slavery, Bakita was a free person. On January the 9th of 1890, Bakita was baptized with the names of Josephine Margaret, and she entered the order as a novitiate. In 1902, Bakita was sent to the sister's house in the northern Italian city of Schio, which she would call home for the rest of her life. Her role in the community brought her into regular contact with the townspeople, and she became beloved, with many considering her a kind of living saint. Schio got through the Second War relatively unscathed, and many believed it was because of Bakita's holiness. Bakita died in the evening of February the 8th, 1947. For three days, thousands of mourners arrived to pay their respects to her body. Her remains were later transferred to the Church of the Holy Family uh, of the Kenoshan Convent in Schio in 1969. The petitions for her canonization began immediately upon her death, and the process was officially begun by Pope John the Twenty Third in 1959. On the first of December, 1978, Pope John Paul II declared Josephine venerable, and on 17th of May, 1992, she was declared blessed. And finally, on February 8th, she was given a feast day, and on October the first, 2000, she was canonized as a saint. Saint Josephine Bakita. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations in the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.